Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission here to help you look and feel your best. In today's episode, we are going to focus on a couple of really interesting topics. We're going to be talking about how can we avoid overwhelm in our lives and live a more peaceful, grounded, and fulfilled life, and also some tips for how we can tap into our vision that we have for ourselves and how we can really prioritize that in and amongst the everyday things that happen both personally, professionally, all that good stuff and the fun stuff in between. We have joining us today, Leah Vachani, and she's hosting a summit for ladies kind of around 40 and over that I've actually, I'm a speaker on, and we're going to include in the show notes of this episode exactly how to register so you can really grasp a ton of information in a really fun online way, which is a summit, which is kind of like this exciting new way of learning. So instead of attending a conference, you can sign up for an online summit and get access to expert speakers on the very topic of helping women thrive, especially around 40 and beyond. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. Leah Vachani is a nutrition coach and certified menopause specialist with a holistic approach to addressing hormonal dysfunction in women during peri and post menopause. As the host of the Women's Health Podcast, Women Aging Powerfully with Leah Vachani, she features dynamic discussions with top thought leaders in women's health, diving into crucial topics often overlooked by many health providers hormone optimization, strength building, fat loss, stress management, detoxification, the intricacies of sleep, and so much more. Leah's mission is to simplify complex science into practical steps for your daily life, empowering women to tackle menopausal symptoms, conquer weight challenges, and boost their overall health. This isn't just about aging gracefully, it's about aging powerfully. Welcome, 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 Leah Vachani to the show. How are you today? And of course, what is Radiance to you? Well, first of all, Rachel, thank you so much for inviting me on this amazing show. It's an honor to be here. And gosh, that's such a good question. What is Radiance? And I was kind of thinking about this while you were doing the intro, and it reminded what came to my mind was when I was a little girl and all through my young adulthood, um, and even now, when I look at each person, I just see this kind of this magic. It's, it's, it's inside of them. And sometimes it shines more vibrantly in some people than others, but it's always there. Every single person has it. And I think that's what I would define as radiance. Beautiful. I think that everyone has the capacity to be more radiant in the way that they look and in the way that they feel. But I think a lot of people get stuck in just how to achieve that, how to cultivate that. What are some of the strategies and practices that are a part of that? And that's what we're all about here on the show. How can we show up as our best versions by the way, if you're new here in my membership at the school of radiance.com, this is where we talk about the things that people don't often have the kahunas to ask in regards to optimizing their own life and having a more peaceful life. I really think that being radiant comes from really balancing our energies, whether that's masculine, feminine, the peace and the get stuff done, and really navigating life with a greater sense of ease and resilience no matter what. Let's talk about this feeling of overwhelm that can sometimes take over our lives when we're going through life transitions. And say, for example, what your specialty is, is helping women through perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause, but just life stuff in general. We all go through it. I'm not immune to this stuff either. Trust me, I've been through the ringer the last couple of years, and I have a couple of gray hairs to, to prove it. But how can we avoid this feeling of overwhelm and stay in peace and maintain our health and our wellness? And how can we shift away from overwhelm in all aspects of our life? Yeah, it's, I mean, you're right. No one is immune to that, myself included. And that's why I actually think that you can't avoid it. 
it's kind of like how I educate my clients. Um, a more tangible example might be toxins, for example, in the environment. You will never be able to eradicate or avoid all toxins, but it's more, it's, it's about how can I reduce, how can I manage, and how can I enhance the rest of my body, all the functions and the systems so that when I do come in contact with it, I know what to do. I can manage it and I can still, you know, go on with my life and feel and thrive. And so overwhelm is in my mind is actually one of those toxins. It's, I think it's, I try not to use the word a lot because it has a negative connotation to it. And although I still find myself saying it. So if you do find yourself saying it, it's okay. This is a practice. This is a journey. Um, but just for definitions purposes, I think we can use that word today. It creeps into everyone's life and, you know, our, the audience, women, 40s, 50s, we tend to wear so many hats. We tend to be basically pouring from our cup in all directions. We have so much going on. And I think it hits us more than perhaps other parts of the population. And what I help women focus in on is having almost a tunnel vision. Like, what is your vision for your life? Like, how do you want to feel? Do you want to be playing with your grandkids, picking them up? Do you want to be able to, you know, go through the day with a smile on your face, enjoying the moments, being able to run or lift weights or, you know, do all the things you want? What is your vision? And for everyone, it's different. So we start there and that gives them a roadmap so that it's not so overwhelming. They... I feel like when we have some tangible points to guide us along the way, kind of a path, it might meander and turn and take a detour and keep going. But if we can give ourselves a path to follow, that actually reduces the overwhelm. We have a little bit more of a focus. And I like to, um, when people, women especially, are having a hard time even remembering what it's like to not feel overwhelmed. Because if you're living like that day after day, week after week, year after year, many women are living in the state of overwhelm ongoing. They can't even remember what it's like to not feel overwhelmed. So I bring them back to usually some point in their childhood. Maybe it was, you know, digging, um, a trough in the mud with water and building a little boat and watching it sail by. You are so in the moment when you're doing things like that. Or maybe it was a building a dollhouse or maybe it was coloring a piece of artwork that they submitted to a fair, you know, something where they remember I was so focused. I let everything else kind of dissipate. And that is the feeling I want them to have as they go through their day, no matter what they're doing. And I know that was a very long-winded way of explaining how I see overwhelm as it relates to health and wellness, but I'll let you pop in and <laughs> ask another question because I feel like I just spoke for a very long time. Oh, I thought everything you said was uh, pretty valuable mm -hmm. to consider. And, you know, I wear a lot of hats. I'll be fully transparent. I do a lot of stuff. Uh, sometimes I think to myself, how on earth do I manage <laughs> a lot of stuff, but I have a clear vision, which we're going to be talking about. And so sometimes when we're wearing all these hats, it's not forever. It's for a season. Okay. But wear those hats and outfits. Obviously I love to rock some beautiful outfits and go through the day. Even if I'm having one of those days looking fabulous, I wore this uh, dress to the clinic. I was seeing patients in the clinic doing some rejuvenation today. Lovely patients. Love you all so much. And I had so many compliments on this beautiful dress and, you know, a little bit tired, maybe didn't have a hundred percent sleep score last night. I'm just as real as all y'all. And, uh, you know, it's great when you get compliments, you put on those hats, you wear those outfits and you wear them, not so much with a sense of pride, but with a sense of joy and coming from that place when you're wearing those hats of being of service, that's 
the difference. I think that that's the key difference when you're showing up in whatever you do and you're wearing hats, when you're showing up out of integrity and you're showing up out of how can I be a service is really important. But sometimes we need to limit wearing those hats, uh, like the ones that can drain us or put, you know, some type of positive spin on it, right? One of the sayings I like to, to uh, repeat is everything's always working out better than I even imagined. So even if you're wearing a hat and it kind of sucks for a while, pardon my French, you know, it's, it's not forever. You'll get through this. You'll overcome it. Stay resilient. Always be ready. Always be resilient to always be radiant. And I love what you said about the path. And there's so many distractions that can include toxins, 100% agree with you. I'm big into biohacking, purifying our environment in regards to toxins in our air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, foods, pathogens, not to mention people, places, and things is also um, under that bucket and realm. And for those of you tuning in, you can actually find my favorite things to just have in your house so you don't even have to think about it anymore from air purifiers, water purifiers, EMF mitigation, um, some of my favorite snack foods that are high protein, gut tests, gene tests, you name it, red light, it's all there on my biohacking page on my website to help you out. The distractions, yeah, definitely toxins. Um, we're going to be exposed to things. But when I feel like if we have just like a little bit of effort to mitigate these things, that in and of itself, I find, gives me a little bit of peace that I'm actually doing something constructive uh, all the time to limit these things. The other thing is the state of the world. And I think that a lot of things, I guess sound like a conspiracy theorist, I know it. But I honestly think that so many of the distractions that we see on social media and on the news are meant to distract us from our vision. Mm -hmm. And my five favorite efforts, faith, family, fun, fitness, freedom, finances. Okay. Focus on those. Those are good things to focus on. Anything else, you know, if you're a lady listening to this, let your man worry about the world stuff, okay? Men are good with the analytical and thinking stuff. Women, not so much. Stay in that beautiful, creative flow state and focus on the vision of what you're here to do and accomplish in your life purpose. I would, speaking of, you know, this path and staying on track and all this, staying on track to what though, which is our vision, the vision that we have for ourselves in our lives, the vision that we have for our kids in our lives. What are some of your recommendations for those who are really struggling with getting back on track with their vision because of the distractions and have a hard time connecting with that vision? A number of years ago, I remember people would ask me, what do you want in life? I didn't even know how to answer that question. It's such a simple question. I didn't know how to answer it. Maybe some of you guys can empathize with that. But how can we prioritize ourselves and our lives to that vision we all have for ourselves that sometimes seems so elusive? Yeah. Well, Rachel, you're not alone. There are so many women, I find it especially in women, that if you simply ask them, what do you want in life? They can't answer. And I think that shows that we don't actually give attention and energy to that. We don't stop and think, whoa, I mean, what do I want? We're just kind of getting through the days. And so I walk through women, women, I walk them through a series of, you know, questions and kind of pulling back the veil of like, just the everyday have tos. And we talk about what you get to do. If, if all of that was gone, what do you get to do? And, you know, as morbid as this sounds, if you could think like if it was your funeral day and you were attending your funeral in a spirit, what would you have, what would you regret? And those ten, like have not done in your life, sorry, what would you regret having not done or not seen or not, you know, had connections with people? Those regrets tend to be the vision. And those tend to be the things that women, they can then anchor on that. Okay, that's actually something I really want. And it can be, it can really be anything, but it's, it's coming from a place of you have this amazing gift being on this earth, surrounded by amazing human beings. And a lot of us forget that. So 
when you really stop and think about it, where do you want that life to go? What do you want to accomplish? What do you want to, who do you want to be? Really, who do you want to be and how do you want to feel is kind of what we're getting down to. Um, and then, so that's, that's a process. It's not easy for some. And for some, it is easy. And then from that, we break down like, okay, what are the goals that are going to keep you on that path towards that vision? You're never going to really get there. In my opinion, you don't actually ever get to your vision. And sometimes it changes. But along that path, if you set goals, it keeps telling you and it's like a check in like, yes, I am on the path towards my vision. And I think that's really kind of the secret to life. And to bring it back down to like actual things, like, yes, it can be goals of like, I want to run a marathon, you know, and then goals to achieve that. So we break it down from big things to smaller and smaller and smaller, more achievable and realistic things. So that's kind of, that's how I work with women on vision. And of course, a lot of it involves lifestyle and nutrition and fitness and biohacking and all those, those great things. Yeah, I love that. And when we're thinking about our vision, it's like the overview of what we desire to have in our life with finances and your home and your family and your relationship, your relationship with God, Mm -hmm. all that stuff. We tend to forget about the stuff in between, right? That's kind of part of the journey to get there and like the filler parts that make all those things just that much more delicious and enjoyable and fun. That's one thing I was missing for a really long time in my life was fun. And boy, do I love having fun. So if you're thinking about how can I have more fun? Well, think about what your hobbies are. And I'll share a couple of mine. Uh, Guitar, pickleball. I love nerding out on personal development. I don't even watch TV or like mindless shows by myself. It's like, how can I be a better person? How can I learn more about something? I'm such a nerd. Hiking in nature, going on an adventure. I did a week-long fast in the desert about two years ago, and it totally changed my life at elevation. You know, I was scaling some sketchy rock faces, uh, totally like without food and I got to the point where I was so empty but then I got completely filled up and what I experienced was just this huge shift in my skin my radiance that's the first time I experienced this huge shift so sometimes when you're doing things that are fun like hiking but adding a little bit of an adventure spin to it with intention to be happier be healthier get a ton of autophagy and cellular renewal at the same time. I like efficiency, clearly. Uh, You know, I got something really great out of it. And sure, it was kind of hard. It was, you know, when you're trying something new. But that's the, that's the, the fun part of life. Love dancing, travel, cultural experiences, cooking new foods, all those things. And, and if you have kids, seeing them experience something for the first time, and that's also super special too for those parents out there. So enjoy, you know, these these moments in between on your path towards your vision and you know really revel in each moment, really be present. Get rid of the smartwatch. Smart technology is not making anybody more smart. It's actually reducing your blood flow to your brain and your vital organs and your skin. It's going to make you more dumb and it's going to make you less attractive because your blood isn't flowing properly. So sometimes I say things direct and to the point. That's my opinion. I think EMFs are the smoking of our generation right up there with canola oil and toxic seed oils. Leah, I'd love to ask you, do you find that a lot of women that you serve, they're just like so gosh darn serious all the time and they want to thrive in their lives. But I would beg to question, and I know this is the case for me, that I was missing fun. Vitamin F? Yeah, vitamin F. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Well, I see it all the time. I mean, even in myself. You know, a lot of women these days are, we're, we're, we have a lot of expectations, I think, from society, you know, have your kids, oh, and work, and, you know, write a book or whatever, or, and do this, and do, it's like, okay, <laughs> it's hard enough even to just be a parent sometimes, if you are a parent, like, that itself can be a job in itself. I guess um, the fun factor It's interesting that you bring that up because no one really talks about it. In this health and wellness space that you and I are both in, 
everyone's all like the newest biohack and macro diets or paleo or keto or you know you're talking about carnivore i'm right there more and like this is the way to feel this way and this is the right way and it's like and or we even talk about emf all the all the, the negative sides and yet i have yet to hear someone really talk a lot about fun and why well, let, let me give you some context here i mean Full transparency, I'm dating again. And when you are getting to know somebody, you want to know what they do for fun. Like, are they doing something sketchy for fun or are they doing something that's, you know, wholesome fun, right? And to see if there's those shared values and, you know, good boundaries in life too. But I think to have fun, you have to make space for it. And I think a lot of people are really missing making space for that. Why, why do you think that is? Why do you think that women in today's society and guys too, we're just so serious? Well, I was wondering the same thing for a long time. I recently completed a leadership program and we talked a lot about busyness and being, you know, not having that space, that time is an indication of a lack of intimacy. And so I was like, huh, that makes a lot of sense. It can be scary to be intimate. It can be scary. It can also be wildly amazing, you know, but those connections, that intimacy, and I'm not just talking about intimacy, intimacy between, you know, two lovers, I'm talking about intimacy and connection between two humans. It's, it's powerful. And I think that can be a two edged sword. You know, it can be, amazing and it can be scary for some people and so i don't have the answer for you but i do think that with their digital world everything happening over zoom or via email you know there's not a lot of human connection anymore or there's a lot less of it people are forgetting how they're forgetting how to be intimate and therefore they're not making space for that i think it's a lost art yeah, I would agree with you. And, you know, that feeling of connection, when, first you have to have it with yourself. Like you need to know who you are, what your vision is, what your path is likely going to be to get there. But be open to maybe other people joining you on your path and bringing some fun and inspiration along the way. And honestly, that's one of the my favorite parts about having a show and speaking on different shows and different summits and working with so many different clients across the globe. I mean, Leah, how, that's how you and I connected. And yeah. right off the bat, I could, sh I could see that there were a lot of shared values and in, in your energy and stuff like that. So I find when we're looking at intimacy with people and we're just kind of like talking about like platonic intimacy here for a second, but also relational uh, sexual intimacy. <laughs> there's kind of got to be this frequency match, right? So say, for example, you're talking with someone and it's, you know, on the street and you're just kind of being polite. And then you're talking with someone, you're like, huh, there's something kind of familiar and there's something that makes me comfortable. Now, this is very different than engaging with a narcissistic manipulator. And if you want to learn how to identify that really quick, join my membership because I love studying the art of communication, the art of connection, and how we can have our needs met and also serve others. And I think that this is really honed in when we know ourselves and our you know, personality operating system, energetic operating system, spiritual operating systems, having our body systems working so that we're as pure and clean as possible so that we can actually hear ourselves think, clear out the noise. I think that that's when we're going to have the, the best opportunity possible to be able to be fully present and identify when, oh, we've come across somebody that's, yeah, I want to be friends with this person. I want to do a business deal with this person. I want to get married to this person. And sometimes we have to connect with people in our daily lives that maybe we don't share that frequency, but you still have to be polite about it and have good etiquette and all of those things and, and still be fully present. But there, I think there's going to be these levels 
with people that we meet where it's a frequency match or it's a mismatch. We, we navigate that stuff differently. So I think you're going to have more fun with people that you have a shared frequency, have more aha moments, more deeper intellectual conversations, be able to learn more from one another. Like that's why I really like you, Leah, is I feel like we have a bit of a similar energy vibe. And I love coming across other women. It kind of is, if I were to describe it, it feels like a sister vibe. Mm. And it's so fun when I see it. And it's like, you know, I was just on your summit. I was like, we got to do a podcast. I got to share you with what you're doing. And so, so this is kind of like how I have fun in this digital world is having conversations. It's, it's something that works really well for me. It's going to be totally different with, with, um, with others as well. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, I have so many thoughts, but I have a lot of curious questions with you and dating as well. (laughs) It's got to be a wild journey with meeting so many people and also loving to just kind of figure out the communication patterns and who they are and what, you know, are they holding back? Anyways, the red flags. (laughs) That sounds wild. Um, that's for another time. I'll ask you on another, another private call, but I, you know, it's interesting what we were just talking about with frequencies. Um, now I'm probably going to botch this because I'm literally just learning about it now, but actually if you go to the summit, you'll hear it talked about, but there was a microbiologist who spoke about the microbiome and how the, literally the bacteria and microorganisms inside of us can facilitate our connection to other people. I was like, what? It was amazing. He was talking about how, you know, certain people's microbiome, when it's um, negatively affected, they are more likely to suffer from loneliness and depression and other issues like that because of the microbiome. And so when you talk about that, I was, my scientific mind went immediately to like, yes. And it's not just about us. It's about our whole system. And when we vibe with someone, when we share a frequency, like it's so complex and I love it, but I won't geek out on that right now because I don't understand it, but it is mind blowing how many things are involved in our relationships and our connections. Biology and hormones pretty much sums it up. (laughs) Yeah. Sorry to clap there if you're listening to this and you're dozing off to sleep. Sorry, Meredith. Not really. Um, Microbiome. It's okay. I do. All right. I know you have to run. Um, Leah, thank you so much for being on the show here. I I love what you're doing. I'm excited to actually have you back on as well. Um, For those of you definitely follow Leah Vachani. I love what you're doing over at Leah Vachani, V-A-C-H-A-N-I.com, as well as on social media. All of her information is going to be in the show notes below. I know you got to go. I got to be respectful of your time, but do you have any closing words for us today? Oh gosh. I, you know me probably by now, Rachel, I love to just talk and talk and talk. But what I would love for everyone listening to do is actually just take a moment of silence and really shut out everything else. Just really like tune into like, okay, what do I need or what do I want right now? Because honestly, mostly our body tells us. Maybe you need a two minute nap on the floor. Maybe you need a protein snack. Maybe you need a hug. Maybe you need some water. Like we tend to actually intuitively know. So if you're a woman and you're running around like crazy, maybe you're running after kids, maybe you have a high powered job, whatever it is, just literally take a moment. And then once you do that, you're like, wow, that actually works. And do it again and do it again and keep doing it. That's my advice. I love it. So pretty much just chill out and have more fun. Hey, guess what? You're going to be more beautiful and more of a pleasure to be around and you'll probably enjoy being around yourself more. I'm being funny here, but it, this episode's got some fun stuff. In. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us here on the School of Radiance podcast. Love you all so much. Learn more about Leah and I in the description of this episode. Be sure to share, like, subscribe, leave a review, reach out to me over email. I'm a person just like you. So say hello. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day, everybody. Stay high vibe, stay radiant, and I'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.